Welcome to Digital Toolbox. In this third tutorial in the series, we've uh, finished importing all of our all of our AutoCAD files, these four floors. So these will all be stacked on top of each other when we finally model them. But right here is floor one, two, three, and four. And I've put them all into individual layers. So floor one is in its own layer. I can turn that one off or on or lock it. Two, three, and four are the same same thing. In uh, four, floor four, uh, you might see that it still has a lot of the information that came with AutoCAD file. And it still has a lot of these uh, old naming conventions from the, the previous uh, file. When I try to delete the, the table block, or the um, title block, I'll delete it and it says there's a block definition named this name on this layer A TTLB. Use the block manager to delete it. Okay. And it says it has one object on it. And we'll try to delete it, but it won't delete. You might have to go into the block manager, which is just block manager command. Press enter. And uh, you can see these old blocks that they have that were on the file. You can go in and uh, see that we don't want this file or, or this this one uh, uh, layer, so we'll go ahead and delete it. Same with these different uh, IDs and other layers that um, aren't just the basic geometry, so we don't need them anymore. But there's blocks on them, so it won't let us just delete them from the layers manager. So in the block menu, in the uh, block manager, we'll go and see all of these unlinked blocks. We can just delete all of these. We aren't going to use them for this tutorial, but we can go and delete them. It says unable to delete nested block definition. CP women is nested in the this other definition. So I'll delete that main definition first, and then delete these other ones. And these blocks we'll go into in a, in a different tutorial, how to use those for your own file. They're just predetermined uh, geometries that you can import and uh, use in CAD in different ways. We aren't going to use them in this tutorial. So you can just delete them, and then delete the, the layers that you don't want. and this will clean up your file for you so now we just have um, purely the things that we we want some of these things I can keep but I'll turn them off like the, that hatch and the uh, room capacities the square footages things like that I'll still keep so here are cleaned up DWGs that we've imported and that's it. So here are the, the four different floors. And we've deleted all, all the, the blocks and the things that we don't want. Now let's scale our geometries. So they all look to scale. They're all the same scale. But they aren't the same scale they, as they would be, uh, you know, in, say, in real life. So we can zoom in to the staircase or this column right here. And I'll use the distance command to figure out how big it is. So distance, enter first point on the distance I'll just go across this column and it says it's 24 feet I know this column isn't 24 feet wide but it's 24 inches wide so I can go into my document properties document properties and this defines all of the things um, the basic things in Rhino the units of your document the, the grid how you view it how you render it different appearance options. You can see I've changed my color, the my background color to black, which is just under appearance colors. It's just so uh, uh, kind of like CAD, how if it's just white all the time, it just kind of kills your eyes after a while. So that's my preference. You can change that too. There's We have other tutorials that go into that. So I'll go under units and units and tolerances. Model units are in feet. 
so I can change this into inches and then I won't scale it and it'll be 24 inches for that column and that, that'll be great. However, this building is too big to use inches for our uh, model. We'd prefer it to be in feet because we're going to be working with larger geometries mainly. So I'll take this and just keep it in feet for, for our modeling purposes here. And I'll scale back our entire, uh, all everything that we have here so that it's all scaled down to the, the correct size. So I'll just select all of it by dragging over it. You can also do select all up here on this command. And I'll zoom back into my column and I'll go scale. Okay. So here, here it asks for an origin point. I'll click one side of the column. The column's chamfered a little bit. So this uh, the total width was going to be 24 feet. So I'll select that same width and now I can scale it proportionally. So now I'll just type in 2. It'll go from the 24 that it was to 2. I'll just click on OK. And you can see it's a, a ton smaller right now. Now it doesn't seem that way since we can zoom in and out so easily, but when I zoom back into the column, I can do the distance command as well. And there it's going to be 2 feet. So that makes sense. That column is 2 feet the overall building is about 260 feet. All of these proportions are very normal and uh, what they would be like in real life. So that's scaling your, your drawing in Rhino.